Income tax 2023-2024. Itemized deductions, gifts to charity. Get ready and some coffee because we need to save some money for vacation with the help of income tax preparation. 2023-2024. Most of this information can be found in the instructions for Schedule A Tax Year 2023, which you can find on the IRS website at irs.gov, irs.gov. Looking at the income tax formula, we're focused on what I would call the below-the-line deductions, more specifically the itemized deductions. Remember, in the first half of the income tax formula is, in essence, a funny income statement. Most income statements having income minus expenses resulting in net income here having income minus various deductions resulting in taxable income remembering that deductions for taxes are good we're typically looking for more of them the primary difference between the above the line deductions or adjustments to income and the below the line deductions being that the adjustments to income do not have to clear a hurdle before you get a tax benefit from them whereas the itemized deductions do have to clear the hurdle of the standard deduction before they are typically beneficial to the taxpayer this is the first page of the form 1040 focusing in on line 12 where we deduct the greater of standard deduction or itemized deduction if taking itemized deductions we're going to be attaching that schedule a schedule a is the itemized deductions the major categories lifted listed on the left although this is only a partial page of the schedule a noting that we have to clear the standard deduction which is primarily tied to the filing status and the filing statuses if single then will be 13,850 that we would need to clear to be able to itemize and get a benefit doubling that if married filing joint first a word from our sponsor yeah actually we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers they don't want to be seen with us but but that's okay whatever because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our Accounting Rocks product line. If you're not crunching cords using Excel, you're doing it wrong. A must have product. Because the fact as everyone knows of accounting being one of the highest forms of artistic expression means accountants have a requirement, the obligation, a duty to share the tools necessary to properly channel the creative muse. And the muse, she rarely speaks more clearly than through the beautiful symmetry of spreadsheets. So get the shirt, because the creative muse, she could use a new pair of shoes. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. 27,700 head of household in between 20,800. And if they're either over a certain age and or blind, we have other uh, standard deductions, which would be higher single could have one or two of those conditions met. The increased standard deductions on the right married filing joint could have one to four of those conditions met two conditions and two taxpayers and the corresponding uh, increases to the standard deduction on the right keep in, in mind that we're going to the gifts to charity now this is probably one of the first things that kind of come to mind as a type of deduction but remember for federal income taxes it's an itemized deduction so if we're giving to charity we might not get a tax benefit from it unless we're able to clear the standard deduction and we're taking the itemized deductions remembering the general idea concept of deductibility for an income tax system would typically be those types of things you had to expend in order to generate revenue most clearly seen on the schedule c where we have an income statement income minus expenses business deductions in other words to get to net income we're taxed on net income so most of the stuff on the schedule a however are personal items that we get to deduct for one reason or the another you can see the argument for charitable organizations that being trying to nudge us to share to give to charity from a more cynical standpoint most likely from lobbyists of charitable organizations that want to stimulate money going to their particular types of charity and uh, so on and so forth 
So that's what we have here on uh, the itemized deductions, typically only being able to get a benefit for giving to charity. And I mean, a tax benefit, obviously, from my perspective, I think we actually gave more to charity as a country in a percentage of income before we had the deductibility of, of uh, charity. And, you know, but for taxes, you get a benefit from deducting the charity if you own a home typically, because the ownership of the home is the thing that usually pushes people over from standard to itemized deduction, given the fact that you're able to uh, take possibly the home mortgage interest and the property taxes once over that threshold, then other itemized deductions become available to us, possibly, for example, giving to charity. So you can deduct contributions or gifts you give to organizations that are religious, charitable, educational, scientific, or literary in purpose. You can also deduct what you give to organizations that work to prevent uh, cruelty to children or animals. So clearly most charitable organizations will be structured as a charitable organization. They will usually um, inform you quite loudly that they are structured thusly, and that's why they're basically asking you for money and so on. Remember that just because something is structured as a charity, however, doesn't mean that it can't have a scammy uh, kind of situation laid out to it, or it certainly doesn't mean that they are efficient in using the money to the charitable ends that they proclaim to be using the money uh, for. So make sure to do the homework so that you're basically giving your money to charity that will qualify. So hopefully you can take the deduction, but also charities, charities that are efficient in what they're doing. And note, I'm not, it's hard to be an efficient charity because there is no market incentive to drive charities to be lean and mean, meaning to, to trim the fat, meaning uh, notice that some charitable organizations might be set up just basically to pay salaries of people that are in the charitable organization. And the question is how much of your money is going to that purpose versus the charitable goal that the money is designed towards, right? How efficient is the use of the money? In any case, certain uh, whaling, whaling captains may be able to deduct expenses paid in 2023 for native Alaskan uh, subsistence bayhead whale hunting activities. Obviously, that is a very specific area that might be for certain individuals. If that if that's for you, that's publication 526. To verify an organization's charitable status, you can check with the organization uh, to which you made the donation. So clearly when you make a donation, usually the charity, if they're legitimate and have charitable status with the IRS, will tell you about it and hopefully give you documentation. You're gonna need that documentation, not typically to file the return, but in the event of an audit, remembering that the IRS will typically act in a similar way as other kind of laws like traffic laws in that they're not going to you're not going to get caught all the time you speed or every time you put something on the return that you don't have documentation for but if they catch if they do random checks and they catch you the penalty is designed to be high enough that you're going to not want to do that again is kind of the design of, of the law typically. So the organization should be able to provide you with verification of its charitable status. So use our online search tool at irs.gov forward slash TOEs to see if an organization is eligible to receive tax deductible contributions. So that's another tool that you can look at noting if an organization is pressuring you to give them money, especially if they're doing it publicly, then I, I would certainly say, no, I'm gonna look at it myself to at least verify that they have charitable organization status and then to verify whether or not they're efficient or not in the use of the money. Because again, just having charitable organization status certainly does not mean that they are actually good at what they do, right? So examples of qualified charitable organizations. The following list gives some examples of qualified organizations. See publication 526 for more examples. You've got churches, mosques, synagogues, temples, and other religious organizations. Uh, Scouts, BSA, Boys and Girls Clubs of America, CARE, Girl Scouts, Goodwill Industries, Red Cross, Salvation Army, and United Way. 
uh, fraternal orders and the gifts uh, will be used for purposes listed under gifts to charity earlier. You've got veterans in certain cultural groups. We've got nonprofit hospitals and medical research organizations. Most nonprofit educational organizations such as colleges they're certainly not very efficient these days on how they're using the money. I don't know if I'd give to them. They keep on having protests about, I, I don't know. Anyways, but only if your contribution isn't a sub, uh, substitute for tuition or other enrollments. So obviously, if you're giving them money and they're giving you classes, they're, they're allowing you to attend their college, then that doesn't look like a charitable contribution. It looks like a market exchange. So federal, state, and local governments and the gifts are solely for public purposes. Again, the whole point of giving to charity these days is so hopefully you can get a tax deduction and give it to somebody who could be a little bit more efficient than the government, who is clearly not efficient, right? But if you just want to give it to the government, then you can do that as well. But hopefully you can do you could do better. You could do better than that. The government should be keeping us safe and then staying out of our business because they, they're lame at doing stuff. That's the problem. That's why they need to be small and out of the way in the corner unless there's an attack. Right? Anyway, amounts you can deduct. Contributions can be in cash, property, or out-of-pocket expenses you pay to volunteer work for the kinds of organizations described earlier. So if you drove to and from volunteer work, you can take the actual cost of gas and oil or 14 cents a mile. So if there was driving involved, then you've got the auto that you have to deal with. The actual cost is typically, if you can track it, uh, going to be higher, you would think possibly here because notice that this 14 cents per mile uh, is a mileage method, which you might be familiar with, or most people are more familiar with, with relation to a Schedule C, but the rates don't always increase at the same rate. So this rate often is lower than what it would be if it was a business mile versus a charitable mile calculation. So add parking and tolls to the amount you claim under uh, either method. So if, you, if, if you're going to a charitable organization, you might want to speed there because if you get a, a ticket or toll i don't know i'm just kidding so, and parking and tolls that you might have in there so but i don't think you can deduct a speeding ticket i'm just kidding but don't deduct any amounts that were uh repaid to you obviously if they repaid it to you you didn't really pay it and so you don't get to deduct it gifts from which you benefit so what if i benefit and this happens because oftentimes part of the the money is going for something and the amount above it is the charitable gift so if you go to a dinner they're giving you a dinner but you're paying like five thousand dollars for it which it seems is higher than the cost of the dinner right so if you made a gift and received a benefit in return such as food entertainment or merchandise you can generally only deduct the amount that is more than the value of the benefit so, but this rule doesn't apply to certain membership uh, benefits provided in return uh, for an annual payment of $75 or less or uh, to certain items or benefits of token value. So usually, if a charitable organization puts together a benefit, hopefully they can give you an idea of how much value you're getting from the benefit and how much of what you are giving is a charitable donation that you can deduct. But for more information, you can see publication 526, which you can find on the IRS website. Example, you paid $70 to a charitable organization to attend a fundraising dinner and the value of the dinner was $40. You can deduct $30. Are you sure the value of that dinner was $40? I think they just cooked it in the microwave for crying out loud. Anyways. That's the idea. You get the idea. So gifts of $250 or more. You can deduct a gift of $250 or more only if you have a contemporaneous written acknowledgement from the charitable organization showing the information in one and two next. So the amount of any money contributed and a description but not value of any property donated. So if there was a contribution of money well, then it's pretty straightforward because money is, by its definition, easy to count, right? But if you donate property, such as most common example to goodwill, clothing, and that kind of stuff, then the, the organization, the charitable organization, isn't a pawn shop. They're not an expert 
at giving you the value of what you're giving them. They're not giving you anything in exchange, but they can at least say they gave me this property. Uh, they gave me a bike or something. They gave me a good whatever and, and tell you the date that the transaction took place. So whether the organization did or didn't give you any goods or services in return for your contribution. So if you did receive any goods or services, a description and estimate of the value must be included. If you received only intangible religious benefits, such as admission to a religious ceremony, the organization must state this, but it doesn't have to uh, describe the value of the benefit. Uh, in figuring whether a gift of $250 or more didn't combine separate donations. For example, if you gave uh, your church $25 each week for a total of $1,300, treat each $25 payment as a separate gift. If you made donations through payroll deduction, treat each deduction from each paycheck as a separate gift. See publication 526. If you made a separate gift of $250 or more, through payroll deductions. So once you go over that dollar threshold for that individual gift, then you've got that level up of verification possibly. So to be uh, contemporaneous, you must get the written acknowledgement from the charitable organization by the date you file your return or the due date, including extensions for filing your return, whichever is earlier. Don't attach the contemporaneous written acknowledgement to your records. Instead, keep it in your records. Why? because the IRS is not currently requiring that you actually give that to them at this point in time, but they are requiring that you have it in the event that is an audit happens, which is similar to say a police officer pulling you over and, and basically asking you, know, you questions. That's what the audit is doing. Although in the case of a police officer, they probably clocked you in as already speeding. You've already been caught. But in the case of an audit, they might randomly pick you in order to see the verifications and then you're expected to have this information and that's how that's one way that that they could basically we can regulate you know what is going on and have penalties sufficient so limit on the amount you can deduct see publication 526 to figure the amount uh, of your deduction if any of the following applies your cash contributions or contributions of ordinary income property are more than 30 percent of the amount on form 1040 1040 sr line 11. so we're comparing things now to generally your income level which usually is tied to the adjusted uh, gross income level and now we're in this 30 percent uh, category so your gifts of capital gain property are more than 20% of the amount on line 1040 or 1040 SR line 11. So this, again, usually isn't the case for most people. You're not going to usually run into this problem because if you didn't make much money, you're probably not going to be giving a very large donation. You know, it's going to be comparable to your income. But in some cases, you might have these situations where the charitable contribution goes over these thresholds in which case then you're going to have you run into these possibly ceilings and then the question is can you make the deduction and if you can't make the deduction do you get to take the deduction in some other period either taking it backwards or typically going forward to the next year possibly being able to carry forward the charitable deduction so you gave gifts of property that increased in value or gave a gifts of the use of property now note these more complex situations will might happen more likely to happen of course with higher income individuals because they are the individuals more likely to itemize in the first place which is where we would be taking these deductions and because they're more likely to have those situations where they might be given a large charitable contribution for example and if you're doing more higher income tax returns and they're itemizing you might want to then enter the tax information into the prior year making sure that you're using the same software so that if there are any carryovers and that kind of thing the software can help you with those calculations so amounts you uh, can't deduct so certain contributions to charitable organizations to the extent that you receive a state or local tax credit in return for your contribution so now you've got a, a substantial credit on the state side so that would probably be, again, a situation that would apply to certain more well-off individuals, you would think, generally. You can see publication 526 for more details 
and exceptions. So an amount paid to or for the benefit of a college or university in exchange for the right to purchase tickets to an athletic event in the college or university's stadium. This is one of the problems when we're trying to add things as deductible on the Schedule A, which are not things that are strictly natural to an income tax system, such as those things we needed to expend to generate revenue. Even that is difficult enough to make sure the categorization is correct. But when you say you get to deduct charitable contributions, you get these funny things where it's like people try to structure something as though it's a charitable contribution, but there's really an exchange going on. And if there's an exchange, you're just buying tickets to a football game. Don't pretend like you're not just because <laughs> you gave them something other, just because you categorized it as a, as a gift. Right, that, that you can't do that or you're not supposed to do that. So travel expenses, including meals and lodging while away from home performing uh, donated services, unless there was no significant element of personal pleasure, recreation or vacation in the travel. So we see this also with business type of things when travel is involved. What's the personal side versus uh, the business side? And then what's going to be the deductibility? How can we separate those two things out? Political contributions. So the government wants to separate out political contributions from the taxes because if we were to allow political contributions, that could you know distort the whole kind of election process. So like if you're buying oil paintings or something from certain political actors out there and you're clearly paying vastly more than the, than the value of the painting, you can't really call it a contribution or, or something for charity because it's clearly at least a political contribution, if not like a bribe or something, which is also not typically deductible. Anyway, dues, fees, or bills paid to country club lodges, fraternal orders, or similar groups. So now, of course, you're paying for dues, which are giving you access to the country club or whatever group it is which of which you assume would are giving value in and of themselves by being part of the group or whatever. So cost of raffle, bingo, or lottery tickets, but you may be able to deduct these expenses on line 16, see line 16 later uh, for more information on gambling uh, losses. So we talked a little bit about winnings in the, in, the win, in the income side of things. You might be able to deduct the losses up to the amount of the winnings when you're talking about gambling situations, but typically gambling is not something that would be charitable in nature, although you can imagine that certain fundraising for charitable organizations might use like bingo and stuff like that. But in any case, value of your time uh, or services. So notice that when we, we're talking about the time we put in, you might say, hey, look, I went and I contributed my time to, to a charity. But typically, if it's unprofessional time, something that you can't really bill for, meaning you, you went to a soup kitchen or something and you helped out in that way, then generally you can't really deduct that. And you could see kind of why, because you would, you would think that that would be difficult to value. I mean, how much could you deduct? What's the rate that you should be deducting? Maybe like the minimum wage or something or, or something like that. Uh, so, but possibly if you're doing, if you're doing work in exchange that's professional in nature, legal work or something like that, then that could be a different situation. Value of blood given to a blood bank. So the transfer of future interest in tangible personal property, generally no deduction is allowed until the entire interest has been transferred. This is another way to, for people to try to skirt past the cutoff, meaning you have to actually on a cash based system have transferred the property or made the payment in the year 2023 if you promise to do something well then you haven't really done it but that's a way to pe that you can imagine people would try to structure something to get the deduction in one year versus another year for example possibly because they have more income in one year versus another year and therefore their tax rates are higher due to the progressive tax system uh, gifts to individuals and groups that are operated for personal profit. So if it's for personal profit operation, you would think that would not be deductible for charitable gifts to foreign organizations. However, you may be able to deduct gifts to certain US organizations that transfer funds to foreign charities and certain uh, Canadian, Israeli, and Mexican charities. 
So clearly we're, we're looking at U.S. tax law. It gets complicated when we're talking about organizations in other countries because by definition, charitable organizations for taxes are structured under the U.S. tax law and they can't be because they're not subject to U.S. tax law if they're in other countries. So how can I give to other countries charitable organizations which might be good but aren't under the same laws? Well, maybe there are some organizations that can be set up in accordance with U.S. laws that help you to funnel the money in through those charitable organizations to other ones that are doing good work elsewhere, possibly. For more information, you can see publication 526 for details. Gifts to organizations engaged in certain political activities that are a direct financial interest to your trade or business. So clearly, if you're giving to political activities and you're saying, like if, if you're given to certain politicians and you're benefiting from the things that they are arguing for, you're basically acting as a lobbyist and you shouldn't get you shouldn't get to deduct the fact that you're manipulating politicians, not out of a spirit of charity, but rather out of a lobbying spirit. Now, you would think, again, the taxes in and of themselves, the fact that we're getting a deduction is already kind of skewing the line if, if we're giving it out of a heart of charity. But but obviously, if you're benefiting directly then that you shouldn't get. So gifts to groups uh, whose purpose is to lobby for changes to a law. So again, if if you're given to some someone saying, ah, I'm given to, to ch this charitable organization that's trying to influence the law because if the law changes, my stock's gonna go up. Well, you clearly that's not, doesn't sound charitable. So gifts to civic leagues, social and sports clubs, labor unions and chambers of commerce. So value of benefits received in connection with a contribution to a charitable organization. You can see publication 526 and uh, cost of tuition. However, you may be able to take an education credit. So if you give to a, a university and they give you tuition, you can't typically deduct it, but you might get a benefit because the government is subsidizing education in many different ways, possibly the main one being the education credits, which we'll talk about in the credits section.